Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. It's Nico from Fin of Discs and today we'll be looking at the very top players from Finland and USA and comparing their stats against each other. Let's get into the video. All right, as mentioned, uh, we'll be looking at the top players in the MPO category. I, I will be making an FBO video as well, at least I want to, but today we'll be con uh, con concentrating on on the MPO category, we'll be taking top four players from both countries, Finland and US. Uh, I will be explaining why top four and not top five, that might be more logical to many people. Uh, but anyway, that's what we'll be doing today. I will be comparing their competition success a little bit overall, as well as then we'll be going into the nitty gritty of the course management, course, uh, course success, what they will be or what they have been do doing uh, successfully um, and what parts of their game maybe not as successfully as others and obviously at the end of it all we'll be revealing the result of the mastic mastical magical mystical giveaway of 100 subs who will be getting one of my discs delivered to their homes home if they have multiple well they have to choose one uh, but that will be at the end of the video so Look forward to that, especially if you were one of the people eligible for it and commented on my previous video. Talking about the previous video, we'll be doing it in similar fashion today as well. So we'll be going on my laptop here and looking at the data. So let's start from the BDGA page. So we'll be taking the US candidates based on ratings, which is quite easy to do. The top US players just happen to coincidentally be the best four players in, in the entire world. We'll be taking Ricky Weizocki, Eagle McMahon, Paul McBeth, Calvin Heimberg. The top four, they have been for a while, so that's very logical. Obviously, Chris Dickerson would have had plenty of merits to be included into here, but because of the finished setup, we'll be taking four. I will explain why. So let's get into that. I'll be taking the finished players here then assessing by rating so first we have Niklas Anttila uh, the top rated player in Finland uh, the recent European champion as well last year we'll be taking him we have Lauri Lehtinen the second best rated player also very young very capable great talent we'll be taking him along then we have Väinö Mäkelä I'm sure is known for most of my audience here has been an international face of Finland already for a few years has been having a high high rating for a long time even even with his age then this list wouldn't be complete if we didn't take along the person who maybe many Americans consider when we talk about Finnish players so obviously Seppo Paju over here we'll be taking him along even though he's not Technically in the top four or five here, but he's still always in the mix and he'll be involved in the first event and uh, so the Las Vegas challenge coming in a couple of weeks so and he's Such a good player and with his pedigree and victories and history He should be here and he deserves to be here but because we'll be using Statmando for much of the statistics, not a lot of Finnish people had stats there. So this is why we'll be only taking these four people because they had information there that I could use. <laughs> so hope you're happy with that. If you're not, I don't really care. Oh, I do, really, do a little bit care, but not too much. Uh, but yeah, if you want to learn more about the Finnish players or other European players going to the American scene this year, Ulti World, World, Ulti World Disc Golf uh, made a nice article about it. Uh, so the European reopen, so player bios, their tour schedules from FBO and MPO players alike. So we have Kristin, Henna, Evelina. But then going here, we have Niklas Anttila, only 20 years of age very young, very talented, as mentioned, the previous European champion, uh, Lauri Lehtinen, even younger, going into 22-19, sponsored by Latitude 64, uh, a couple of Finnish Tour wins last year, and a couple big wins before that even, then Vaino Mäkelä going for the skies there in the picture, 
as mentioned already very established but only 23 years old him as well the recent Finnish national champion uh, from last year and then obviously we get to Seppo Paju um, who is who everybody knows a lot of a lot of um, victories in the past and also still very talented so take a look at that if you look want to look at more players from here but speaking of Statmando earlier I'll be taking those course or competition result competition success that's from here we have Niklas Antila as an example doing his famous Nikke Nosto which would be in English Nikke Lift which is his famous putting style at, famous at least here hopefully after this year famous also around the globe we'll be taking the last three years so 2019 20 21 um, because I think that's most representative of their current skill level, capability level and, and, and if we take the last 10 years, Paul McBeth and Ricky Vaisoki and Seppo Paju also would maybe <laughs> dominate the field a little bit, uh, the stats a little bit, so let's do it like this. Then I'll be taking tiers A over, so European Tour uh, majors and other A tiers, the Finnish Pro Tour for example is A tiers, so all of those events so that they're only the biggest events I'm leaving out B and C tiers. So let's get into the magical data that I have in my magical Excel that I pulled uh, manually unfortunately Statmando even with their great data they don't have really an export functionality so maybe something to develop. Um, but let's look at this so we have the four American players, four Finnish players if you want to take uh, pause here to look at the different data do that but if you don't then don't um, I'll be look, going through this so uh, the American players have been in quite a few more events that the Finnish players so the most um, comparable stats will be the percentages so let's look at the Finn percent win <laughs> percentage first Americans doing quite well and Nicholas Antila there in between uh, stabbing in, uh, stag, stabbing himself into the mix, uh, but Americans their podium finishes for this group, also Americans um, with Nicholas um, there, top ten finishes for this group, the same order. You can see these are quite quite high top top 10 finishes for most people, average places similar to most, worst places we need, don't need to focus on that, everybody has their bad days. Then cast percentage which is a little bit interesting, uh, we can see on this level very high cast percentage as you would assume, but then getting into the cash amounts, there's a little bit of a difference in this, so biggest cash uh, that each player received from a single event. We can see that the Americans have a bit bigger purses um, that that we do in, here in Finland or in Europe for that matter. So all of these are quite in a different category. And funnily enough, the biggest Finnish um, purse here or Finnish, the biggest Finnish cash from Seppo is actually a second place from Beaver State fling in 2019, so that's also from the American soil. So further underlining the fact that the process and the market is a bit bigger there at the moment at least, because we also have recent Finnish national winner as well as European championship winner here with quite uh, quite smaller uh, amounts of cash. Uh, that will also make the average cash bigger in America. The best ratings, we got into ratings a little bit in my previous video, so the level of competition is just wider and bigger, bigger and better <laughs> in America. Uh, so that's why the ratings are also higher. And average ratings as well. Worst ratings, not particularly um, uh, interesting or necessary to look at too much. Um, but then, I also looked at more detailed stats from UDISC. We have Lauri Lehtinen here as an example uh, doing his cool disc rotating thing looking at the cloudy Finnish weather which is 
unfortunately quite regular. So I took the UD stats from 2021 season. Uh, so I took all of these into my Excel. Uh, so UDisk also could have a export function, but they don't. At the least I didn't find it. They might have, and now somebody in the comments will call me stupid, but that's fine. I did what I did. So I took all of this into the Excel and then uh, did this. So here, again, the same story. If you want to pause and look at the numbers in detail, please do so. I'll be getting some highlights from here. So we can see from the total drive amounts that the Americans had more competitions last year than the Finnish people did. So that's understandable, but that makes more sense for us to look at the percentages as always. So I think the sample sizes are big enough to compare those. So fairway hits. Um, a telling story if we are making your game easier or, or more difficult. So the Americans winning there by a bit. Vaino Mäkelä doing his great job there, but five people within the ten, top 10 of UDISC rankings globally. So that's quite cool. Some of the Finnish guys lagging a bit behind. But then how well are they approaching from, from those fairways on for, or from the tee box so parked? Uh, right next to the basket, Sir, green in regulation, gir in Finnish, um, for circle one, which means 10 meters or 33 feet. So if you arrive there for your birdie putt, so on a par three you need to land there with your first shot or on a par four with your second shot and so on. So the sir, uh, green in regulation, we have the top four people in the world uh, in this stat as well. So quite impressive, that will make the next part of the game easier, that will be going on later, or going to later. But not so bad here as well, so all of the eight people are actually within the first 11 people in the global rankings of this stat. So quite impressive, but still the US players getting the nod there. And then we have circle two, uh, which is then the wider area, so 20 meters or 66 feet, um, same stat, but it also includes the circle one and parked. So basically it's uh, all of the percentage, all the percentage of all approaches within that circle two. And actually here, the Finnish players are all in top 10 globally. So they are arriving to cir within circle two more often or more frequently than the Americans, but the Americans, when they do that, they just get closer. So they get either parked or in circle one, which will make the putting a bit easier. And when I go down, you will know what the difference it makes. Uh, just next one, we have OB rate, which is actually also going to the Finns. This is wrongly these colors, but Nik Niklas Antila there being the first in the world in OB rate. so. O getting OB strokes compared to all the holes you've played. So the lower, the better, at least, uh, of course, the easier you make your game. Then we have a couple other things, scramble rates. So in scramble rankings also, Niklas first, Lauri second, Paul third, uh, bounce back ranking. So after a bogey, how well have you done? The next hole we have here, Vaino third, Seppo seventh, Ricky second. So really we have the top players in the world here. Then uh, the money maker area. So as they say, you drive for show, putt for dough. So this is where the results are made. Circle one, uh, putting accuracy. So within te from 10 meters. Uh, so this is obviously Ricky and Eagle in all of these stats. Uh, one of the best people in the world. Plus players in the world, they're sort of not, um, their putting has not been praised for nothing over the years. And we can see it clearly here. Uh, but then other people sort of average, but because of those two, mostly because of those two Americans take that. Then circle one X, which means still within circle one, but removing the 
pots that are so close that you can basically reach the basket and drop it in. So all those um, all those very close pots are gotten away. So this, these are the pots that you really have to putt, so to speak. And otherwise the same, except Lauri over here, seventh in the world in that, which is interesting. But then the real differentiator overall is the circle two putting. So from 10 to 20 meters or 33 to 66 feet, we have the top players in the world in this one as well. But then the Finnish people are lagging a little bit behind in that. So uh, the fact that you don't get closer to the basket when you're approaching and then you have to put uh, putt from the second circle, it shows in the results. So this is all sort of the different stats start to accumulate when you do different things better, different other things become easier. So, so this is what the pros do well and this is why it's a difficult game to be at the top. Uh, comparing the top against us mere mortals, I decided to leave a couple interesting um, stats here. Or before that, I actually want to show the birdie rate because this is actually also amazing. Uh, with the exception of Seppo, all of our seven other players are within the nine top nine of the world in this ranking as well. So uh, that's just cool, <laughs> I think. But yeah, comparing the pros to us mortals, I think this is interesting. So we have double bogeys, triple bogeys here. Uh, double bogeys for the entirety of last year, we have Ricky with nine out of 1351 holes and we have 12 with Calvin, 11 with Maina, 7 with Seppo. Then we have two double bogeys in the entire year with Ni for Nic Niklas Antila. So two double bogeys I would count quite frequently into a single round. <laughs> so this is a bit different. Obviously the expectation level is a bit different as well, but this is a cool thing. And also triple bogey is even cooler. 2, 3, 2, 1, 0 for Weine, 1 Seppa, 0 for Niklas, 2 for Lauri. So this just really goes to tell you how, how clean you have to be to be able to compete on this level. Uh, you can't blow up in many holes. These peoples didn't, these peoples, <laughs> these people didn't blow up in many holes throughout the entire year. And that's, I think, amazing. Okay, so we looked at the different players, what they are good at, what they are maybe not so good at, how well they do in competitions, but so how could we say how well do they do in competitions against each other? Well, we don't have to analyze data yet for it because we have events coming up where all are participating or at least most. So I took these uh, tour schedules from the Instagram where they kindly lent the information on their posts, every one of them released their tour schedule. So uh, I mapped them out here. So Las Vegas will be the first one we'll, where most of the Americans and also Seppo will be attending. Se Seppo won't be part of the majority of the springtime tour because he'll be competing in Finland and Europe, but he'll be coming back in the autumn time then after European Open. Uh, we have Waco where Lauri starts his tour, continues in the Open at Belton, then Texas Stage, Disc Golf Championship, Niklas joins, Vaino joins, as well as the others, uh, Music City Open, a few pay only Eagle from the Americans there, Throw Down the Mountain, Champions Cup, everybody except Sepp, as well as Jonesboro, Dynamic Discs Open, Masters Cup, two people from both countries, OTB, most of them, then we head to Europe, Nokia Open, actually Paul Macbeth has it in his schedule, hopefully we see him there. Um, Sula Open also in Europe, European Open in Finland, most people coming there. Ricky didn't have it in his schedule, but I'm assuming that he'll be there. Uh, Niklas will, I'm quite sure he will be there, so i just mark it there. Des Moines Challenge, Vaino will be there out of Finnish people. And then World Championships, everyone. Then an interesting one, Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open, where Ricky Wysocki and Lauri Lehtinen will take down uh, 
take it down, hopefully take it down, they will uh, sort of go into the bloody battle of the vi victory between each other. Most likely there will be other people as well, but uh, that's interesting that only two of them will be there. Then GMC, MVP Open, USDGC, and then Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship, obviously. I'm assuming that everybody who qualifies will probably be there. And one note for Niklas Antila here, his post mentioned that he'll be taking part in these and also World Championships and the rest of the tour. So he didn't mention specific tournaments, but I'm assuming that he will be part of at least many of these. But you can probably see that June and July there are many Disc Golf Pro Tour events that the Finnish people are not. So I've only taken the events here that people from both countries are at. So for example Idlewild, Preserve, things like that during June and July are not here because the Finnish people are not there as they're competing in Finland or in Europe at that time because those are basically the only two summer months we have in Finland so <laughs> you want to take advantage of it. But yeah, that's it for the tour schedules and the diff comparisons between the different people, different players. I hope you enjoyed it. That's not it for the video though because now we get into the mystical magical giveaway of 100 subs who will be the winner and can be selecting one of these discs. Let's find out now. Welcome to the sacred ceremony of raffle. I have put all of the commenters names here in ridiculously small papers and will now raffle the winner. This is the lucky one. So small. Oh, there you go. Winner is Mika89. Congratulations. I will be in contact with you to agree the disc selection and the delivery. End of ceremony. Welcome back to the video. I know, I can make my own sound effects. Or can I? No, I can't. <laughs> or at least I shouldn't. But thanks everyone for participating in the giveaway contest, so to speak. It was great to see all, all the comments there. And always the feedback is really appreciated. It's so fun to see different people from different places. Um, enjoying my stupid videos, it gives me more energy to do them, gives me more ideas, obviously. A lot of the ideas are provided by the comments, so please keep giving that any feedback in YouTube or Instagram, just let me know, it's always fun to hear. Um, but that's it. Uh, again, follow me on Instagram or Twitter if you want, uh, the same at Fin of Discs. I will be releasing information on the next video topic in Instagram, so if you want to check that out in advance, be there. If you don't want to or you don't care about Instagram or me or anything, then don't. <laughs> it's your choice and your prerogative. But anyway, until next Sunday and the next video, thanks for watching for now. So long.